<laughs> well, good evening and welcome to About the Valley. And tonight we're going to talk uh, STEM. STEM, absolutely. Yes. And if you know what that means, that's science, science, technology, yes, engineering, you got it, and mathematics. You you get an A plus. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, really, when you come down to it, that's the future of America. Yes, it, it, I mean, STEM is something that incorporates technology and really any industry at this point is using technology, even in yeah. the arts, even in what you might historically not think of as STEM related fields, they're using STEM related skills. And yes. what's really interesting is that STEM related skills are also changing with AI, with all the new technology. Oh AI is gonna be a big, big change in industry. AI is a lot of fun. But what it is doing is making the critical skills needed for STEM more of the problem solving, the critical yes. thinking, the creativity, the adaptation that historically you found in the humanities. So really, everything is starting to blend, and it's a really exciting time. It really is. You know, uh, of course, we're in the Blackstone Valley, where it's the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution in America. Mm -hmm. And also, Franklin, Mass. is the uh, home of Horace Mann. I don't know if you're familiar with Horace Mann. I'm Mann. not familiar. Horace Mann, was the, he came up with the concept of public education. Okay. It didn't exist before then, before his concept. It's going way back. And the reason it, he came up with it was to educate the workforce so they could work in the mills that were springing up all through the valley. Because mm -hmm. they, they needed someone who was educated in working in factories and not growing crops, because yes. we were basically agricultural. I did know that the public school system was based, you know, its inception was during the Industrial Revolution, yeah. and that was the basis for a lot of the formatting, which is right. somewhat changing now, which you can see through, you know, some of the state regulations for innovations and things like that. Uh, but I didn't know that that came from right here. Yeah, from Franklin, Massachusetts. If you still at a Horace Mann School in Franklin. I'll, I'll have to <laughs> learn more. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and that was the idea because the, the factory owner said we we could bring these people in, but they don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got to educate them then. And now we're in the same situation. We have a new industrial revolution. Yes. A technological industrial revolution. Yes. AI, of course, being the head of that right now. Mm -hmm. So your, your group is what trying to do is bring about STEM education. Yes. Well, we're we're bringing up. We're trying to bring all sorts of innovations to education, and we work with approximately 20 school districts, and we work with different businesses because the skills needed for the workforce and workforce development are rapidly changing. They're not even the same they were five years ago. Right. So the Blackstone Valley Hub for Workforce Development works across uh, ages, from t kindergarten through when you don't want to be in the workforce anymore. <laughs> and then we still might ask you to come back and talk to some people and, and get your wisdom. Um, to really try to get everyone connected to the roles, the industries that will suit them and will meet our, our businesses' needs in the area. Yes, and you're talking 20 plus now. Yes, over 20 schools at this point. We've paused. And that includes the entire Blackstone Valley. <laughs> yes, so I w the vast majority of the Blackstone Valley, I unless I'm looking at a map, I try not to say 100% of everything, but um, I believe the the full Blackstone Valley, and then we've expanded outside of right. that. In Massachusetts, by the in, way. In Massachusetts with mm -hmm. uh, Shrewsbury, Sh Shrewsbury uh, Northborough. Yeah, you've expanded. Milford, yeah. too, isn't it? Milford. Yes, you really I mean, expanded out of the Blackstone Valley. Bellingham, and, and uh, we met with Westport, Massachusetts. They came in to learn yeah, our model really, just last month. Yeah, you're down on the coast. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. so this is, a, <laughs> this is really growing. It is. But, even, you know, you, you found even at the uh, State House, Mm -hmm. There's a lot of c people talking about what's going on here. That started right here in the valley. Absolutely. This this fall, actually, we are part of the Massachusetts Innovation Challenge, um, which is large events that schools bus into. Uh, the, our areas was at Polar Park, and then we were at the Basketball Hall of Fame uh, for the Springfield area, where we showcased our virtual reality oh. programs, our Dubot programs, and our problem-solving programs. And all of our programs are designed, and I work more with the schools than I do with the adults, but all of them are designed to create a pipeline. So for instance, our DuBot programs 
it, the skills you learned to code a Dubot to pick up candy that the kids <laughs> really want, so they want to code that, you know, is the same, the building block skill that is for universal robots, which we have for older people to train on. Right. That is what Dell uses in their manufacturing and is our, the industry standard. And all of our programs are designed that way to really uh, create a pipeline. Yeah, well, in fact, you're talking robots. That's part of your expansion now at the Hub, right? Absolutely. So we have a new electronics lab. Uh, we've expanded our footprint. We're taking over Linwood Mills a little bit. Hopefully we're good <laughs> neighbors. Um, so we have the expansion with our electronics lab. We have 3D printing. And then we um, we've actually have a new partner called True Robotics. Um, Yes. And that's an entrepreneur he was on in the, the area. show a few weeks ago. He's amazing. Isn't he? Yeah, he, he is. Right I from mean, Sutton, Mass. Yes. WPI grad. Yes. And a genius with robots. Absolutely. He just hosted his first competition, I think, today. It might have been yesterday, but it was uh, recent. And his vision for how to make robots accessible and robotics technology accessible for the youngest kids. I mean, they all can play video games. We know we, they can use this technology. So it's about leveraging that interest yeah. and that curiosity. And they start building these skills. And by the time they're older, we're doing internships. We're doing work-based placements. And then they can go straight into jobs or careers that they want, or if they want to go to college, they have a really good sense of what they want to do so that their investment of funds and time is a good is in good but use. This is what's happening, to you in the workforce. You know, years ago, you graduated from high school and you went out and got a job and you might work in a factory doing assembly work or something. Those days are gone. <laughs> now you're going to work in a factory. You're programming a robot to do the work. A lot of times that's true. And that's what they need. That's, a, that's what the workforce needs. Exactly, which is why those critical skills of problem solving and yeah. critical thinking are just so much more important because there's not as much of that rote, repetitive work. They really want people who can think, that have initiative, and, yeah. and we try to, to help them who out really with that. really want to do repetitive work? No, it's not fun. I don't want to. <laughs> no, neither do I. I never could handle it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure someone wants to, but it's not me. <laughs> I, I, I did it, I think, for three nights in a row when I quit. Yeah, I had I didn't last half a day. I think I folded at um, Filene's yeah. for half a day in college, and I was like, this is it for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's no challenge. No. But today, no. that's what every the jobs are a challenge job, and you need to know something to do that. And part of the problem, too, with the education system over the last few years, we got away from STEM education, didn't we? Well, I think that... They went to MCATs. So there's a lot with testing, and and I think the state has, um, with the current administration, and they're really refocusing on getting hands-on, yes. project-based learning, getting our high schools with Innovation Career Pathways, which is a wonderful program, STEM at Work grant, which we currently have, to get our young adults out in the workforce, including right. we work with YouthWorks, which actually goes from 14 to 24. Um, to have those hands-on experiences, to get those skills and all of that. So, it, but it's a fast-paced change. I mean, over the past five years, everything has changed with yes. technology. And so public school systems um, are doing their best to keep up with that. And we try to help them. Well, obviously. the thing is, if you, if you teach the MCATs, yeah, they'll probably learn something, but they're bored. You're gonna have dropouts, because it's gonna take it anymore. Yeah. It's like doing repetitive work. It, I'm not a huge fan of testing, I will be honest. I think there's a place for data, certainly. I right. actually, um, w one of the things we're doing, we're semifinalists in the Career Z program, which is a Biden administration challenge, and we became semifinalists because we're building in a data ag aggregation tool, um, oh. which, which is kind of collecting a lot of disjointed data for our schools and our state connected to all of this and making it interactive and usable for everyone. Oh, I, data is very important to industry. <laughs> yeah. It really is. But knowing what to do with the data, right. in my belief, is even more important. Because oh, yeah. it's just numbers or it's figures. Yeah, you can get all this information, but what, what do you do with yeah, it? Yeah, you have to have <laughs> yeah. a, a use for it. And, and 
data storytelling or data narration is actually one of the upcoming critical skills because all the companies need that. They need someone who can analyze it and yes. tell you what it means and make it usable for the rest of uh, their staff. And if we don't think that's important, China's using a stream emphasis on gathering data. What does that mean? Yeah. A, stream emph a stream emphasis? Yeah, they, they, they're working very hard to get as much data okay. out of the U.S. as they can on, every, on individuals and everything. Okay. Because that's how you build your future. Yes. Well, that's how you know what, what's going to be selling, what's going to be in demand. Absolutely. So identifying patterns, trends, right. um, knowing how to analyze it and what to use it for, because you can use it for lots of different things if right. you understand how to work with it. Exactly, yes. and that's how you set up your plan for your future. When you're planning your country, your co your company, you need that information. I mean, if you're going to do a good job, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can plan a company lots of different ways, but if you do not look at markers and you don't look at um, data and account for context and things like that, it's 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 well, like gambling. <laughs> yeah, and with the infusion of the internet. Now, you know, internet advertising, you want to, you have, you have the potency now of directing your advertising to who you want. Yes. Yeah, and, and you can do that now to the small business level. Yeah. It, it used to be just big companies that had that capacity, but now one of the, bene you know, certainly there's pros and cons to all technologies, but with AI and some of the other big data, the, it has really become accessible for small businesses, which in a lot of ways is, is a wonderful thing because entrepreneurs like Anthony yeah. can access tools yeah. that are, are usable for him. And, and I, I hope Anthony out there, if you're watching, I hope I'm not overstepping, but he's one who's, he's looking for trends. He's looking for innovations. And there's a lot of people, especially in the Blackstone Valley. I mean, we're known for innovation. And yes. we're known for starting those trends, like you were just saying, with the in industrial revolution. It makes a lot of sense that we would be leaders in, in this uh, workforce well, revolution as well. Anthony was selling his robot kits to schools in California. Yeah. I mean, you, you wouldn't have thought of that 20 or 30 years ago. Yes, it's all become very accessible and usable for everyone, right. which is great because it also makes those that maybe have less access or less awareness in their natural home settings and in their towns that now information and technologies become available. As long as someone you know, is able to cue them and say, hey, you can do this, this is how. Um, and I think that that only strengthens the numbers of our educated workforce, which strength strengthens our companies in the area and our economy. Yes, as a result. I mean, Head Hub, you're teaching, one of the things you're teaching is a machine, machinist. Yes. And I, I talked to, you talk to companies, a lot of machine companies around here, they're small, but they can't find the people that know how to use equipment. Well, they should come to the Hub. But now you can come to the Hub <laughs> and you can get, you can get your people yeah, trained. Yeah, certainly. And com companies work with us all the time and they yeah. can work to develop classes specific. So it, even if they have workers that they need t trained on new skills because things are changing, they can have a class at the hub for incumbent workers. Right. Or, you know, tell us what they're looking for and people will take the class and then they have trained workers and to, to fill their And you're working with the positions. schools as well. So they have the kids can come in from their school. Yes. Now they don't do it during school hours, do they? They can. Oh, they can. Yes. And going to school is agreeable. Yes, so it's it's, Based, those sorts of things are based on the school and what they want to do and what their goals are. Because, be, you know, we are not in a place where we're telling anyone what they need to do. We are here to serve as a nonprofit to meet everyone's needs. So, for example, Shrewsbury High School currently uh, has a van that brings a group of I was young say, men. How do, they, how do they handle transportation? Well, a lot of the schools have vans now. Yeah. So they were able to block off uh, a group of students that and – they, for a couple periods in the afternoon, after lunch, they come to the hub, they do their class. Um, there's actually, if you look on our, our LinkedIn and Facebook, there's a, a wonderful video. They made a 3D speaker in their first class. They designed oh, it wow. and made a 3D speaker, and they played uh, Miley Cyrus dancing in the USA, I think oh. is the name of the song, and 
all these teenage boys are dancing and being very silly. Um, and it was wonderful because the, a lot of the kids that we get all sorts of kids, you know, from high achievers to uh, less engaged students. And I think one of the parts that I love about working at the hub is that across the board, we're able to engage the student because right. of the, um, the diversity of what we have to offer. There's so many different industries and roles that we can help make them aware of oh, or yeah. give them the first step towards their goals. And then mm -hmm. there's hope involved in that. There's curiosity. And then maybe school becomes more meaningful if they were less engaged. That's what I mean. Yeah, they have a path. Know, if, if they're engaged in academics all day long, a lot of those kids are going to say, I've had it with this. Yeah. They, they could they'd either drop out or they just about make their way through, but they're bored all the time they're there. Where when you come to your place, they're finding job skills. Oh, I can see how this relates to something we can do on the on the outside world. Absolutely, and it and it it's wonderful when we have consistent classes. If choose uh, schools choose to do that with us, we also host a lot of field trips. So um, and that can oh, be a that's group, a big fact. Yeah, yeah, like a group of eight to a group of thirty, and they just come to the hub and they have a tour. They can see what the machines do. Um, I do labor market information with them and we you know I have an interactive tool so we can find out like if you wanted to be a carpenter what does yep. that mean specifically for central Massachusetts how many jobs are there what are you going to make you know what education do you need and all of that information is really helpful when you combine it with something visual something that they can see that they touch that they're like oh this is maybe they like you know the lathe maybe they like CNC yep. maybe they like it electronics or you know, we have virtual reality um, interns that are making original content. I mean, Clark University is participating, and they took footage for us on, um, it wasn't the Arctic, but it was just underneath on a voyage. And so they're learning about what does it mean to be a helicopter pilot that moves people from a boat to the place and oh. all sorts of stuff. And then the kids that are interested in heavy technology are making virtual reality experiences that then are available to the thousands of students at the schools we serve. This is, so you're almost like a mini folk tech. Well, I, you Not know, quite that <laughs> high, but I'm saying. I mean, I think that we we are growing at a rapid pace. Yes. So um, certainly the hub has grown so substantially this year. And I think that that speaks to the need and the desire of the surrounding populations of the districts, there's so so much interest and there's a limited capacity, obviously, at vocational uh, schools. So certainly, you know, I wouldn't say that we're the same as vocational schools. They're, no, you're not going to get the different. same education because right. like, they're doing it 20, they're doing, they're doing uh, it all the time. Six so that's, hours a day. That's an absolute different level than um, some of our stuff, although we have Grafton Job Corps who's there all of the time. So, yes. Um, I am yes, not you've a, had a number of people graduate from Grafton Job Corps, yes, haven't you? Yes. And they're from all over the country. Absolutely. And we have MacWix, and I'm not on the technical side. Um, my, my sister is actually the executive director, Ashley Bregman, and I'm a good strategist and I'm good on computers and all that new tech, as they say, but I don't, I don't touch the big machines because uh, I'm, I'm probably going to break something or hurt myself in the process. <laughs> so I'm probably not the best person to interview on the specifics of our, our vocational tech programs. We have a lot of them and they're, they're continuing to grow and um, how that relates to vocational tech schools, you know, is of less interest to me than um, increasing our ability to meet the needs of those that maybe aren't in vocational tech. Right. Um, that have an interest, whether that's exploratory or whether that's skill building, whether that's certification. I want to continue to increase our offerings so that we can meet that need. Well, at least if they, when they go into the job workforce, they go apply for a job, they have somewhat, somewhat experience. Yes. And they can put that down on their uh, application. Absolutely. And not everything we do happens in our offices, which is an awesome thing. So we can start them mm. off with something, and then they could lead to an apprenticeship. Well, they you can... get them an apprenticeship in local businesses, right? Yes. Yeah, so there's like a we lot. Have, we have one of your apprentices here. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of different opportunities, and sometimes the education happens at the hub or the training. But I would say there's 
way too many students and adults and every learners because you have to keep learning these days to keep up yeah. to all fit in one place anyway. So I think one of our strengths is the hundreds of business partners we've had and, and continue to have and grow and that allows all of these students to find places to explore, to get experience, to learn skills from more experienced um, business people. Yeah, I mean, and this, uh, this is the dream that started, what, maybe five years ago? Yes, about five years ago is the dream of Jeannie Hebert. I was not yeah. around at that time, but if anyone has met Jeannie Hebert, you know that uh, she she acts fast and acts big. Yes, when, she, I, when she comes <laughs> up with an idea, she makes sure it gets done. She, and she has good, great instincts. So I know yeah. that this was a huge idea of hers and that she did have some people saying that's, it's, you're dreaming too big. You're a dreamer. <laughs> you're a dreamer. You know, like you're like John Lennon. It's never going to happen. And she made this happen, yeah. you know, along with the her supporters and, um, you know, AET, AET Labs um, uh, is was a huge supporter with equipment and things like that. Um, a lot of the local yeah, manufacturers I, It's invested, amazing how much equipment like, she was able to obtain. Yeah. Well, the local manufacturers really supported her, and that was the core, and that was where we started. Um, and and everyone is very proud of that. But Je Jeannie's vision was absolutely amazing, and I think the growth really speaks to that. I'm also amazed at how she finds all these people to work for her. Our staff? Yeah. <laughs> well, she's great to work for, for one. But she, she finds all these people, and everybody there is really perfect for their job. Yeah, well, it, I think that it, it speaks a lot, actually, as far as, as workforce changes. It, the younger generations, especially, are really invested in finding the culture that fits them. So it's not even just the tasks of the job anymore. It's it's finding the culture that speaks to them as people and speaks to them about, you know, having some work satisfaction and what they want to do. And I can say I'm not younger, but that's it's a really important thing for me. Um, I am one who always likes to develop and to grow and to innovate. And Jeannie creates an environment and a culture yes. where I am allowed to constantly do that. And so it's a great, and that's why it's a great fit for me. And, but every one of the staff is different and is allowed to be so. Yeah. And I think that's why we are such a happy crew and, and why this is working so well is because she identifies what's meaningful and what people's strengths are. And we customize the role for it. I mean, she got you and you, you brought you in and your sister. Yes. And you work as a team. We do. I mean, it, it's great. We live two houses away from each other, yeah. so this is, you know, this makes life it's a little It's almost really like a family easy. business. <laughs> well, you know, my dad used to be president of the chamber way back when I was a kid, so he knew Jeannie before I did. Oh. Um, yeah, no, Jeannie went to my sister's wedding. I never, I mean, I lived out of state and stuff, and this all kind of came it was like a domino effect. I never expected to end up here, but it feels like a family at the office, certainly. And my sister and I are quite different. Sometimes people say we're like, you know, one's the right side of the brain and one's the left side of the brain. But it's it, in this situation. But it works out it's as a team. The benefit for everyone yeah. because we got it covered. <laughs> right. So no, what you need, you need people who don't think tunnel vision, and this is the way. To, they can think outside the box. Yes. We, we try to be adaptable. We try when businesses come in or school districts or students, we try to listen to what the pain points are, what the strengths are. And I always say I'm more of a weaver than anything else. I collect information so that I can use it when I'm sitting down with someone. Else. Okay, if we put this stuff together, this is how we can make that happen. And we try to do that for anyone who comes into our office. Well, as a weaver, you're in the right place as an old cotton mill. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> they did a lot of weaving in there. As I told you, I'm not allowed to touch the big machines. <laughs> right. I'm allowed to think. <laughs> and computers, I'm good on those types of things. And, and weaving strategy, I should say. I'm the weaver of strategy more yeah. so than anything else. <laughs> but it is amazing. I mean, you're, you're pretty much going to have the whole bottom floor now of the we milk. We do. Although we also have Blackstone Valley Physical Therapy there. Right. Girls and on the Run who adore. They moved. They moved over in with they're, the... They're like on the... out. There's, I still consider them part of the club, though. 
Yeah. You know, I love them, so I, I'm not ready to say. No, no, they're not. great. That's a great organization. <laughs> they do a great job there. But they moved yeah. in with the with the uh, with the heritage corridor. Heritage corridor. Yes, but they're still on the first floor, and then yep. we have a barber shop. Yeah. Yeah, which is great because we never have time to get haircuts. So my my <laughs> my son comes and gets his haircut done at the barber shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which works out. <laughs> they, oh, they do a very good job business there too. They right? do. They do. Right, they're always packed. They got well. They're good at their job. So yeah. that's that makes it easy. But yeah, no, we we have a lot of we have a large footprint at this point. We even yes. have a patio. So we've had we had um, a mixer recently. I call it a mixer. That's probably an old fashioned term. Um, but for businesses and for school internship coordinators to come and we had, you know, some some snacks and some drinks just to meet each other, talk about students. And a lot of people were able to connect and so that those placements in the future are that much easier because it's really all about building relationships and bridging between the business world and, and the schools or well, the this, people and the this employers. very important because the businesses need to let you know what their needs are for employees. Yes. And the only way they can do that is to meet with the schools. Yes, or, or sometimes they meet with us and they, they let uh, us know. Uh, well, through you, you can yes. be the uh, connector between them. We are, yes, that's and, absolutely. And so that you can train the right prop, the proper people that walk right into these work, work workforce situations and uh, get the job done. Yes, it's a win-win for everyone, in our, in our opinion. No, and it, what it does, it causes industry to locate here. Because I hope they, so. Because <laughs> industry goes where they know there's employees. Yeah. Well, I, I hope that that is one of the domino effects of our work because I, and I know the hub in general, is of the mind of boats rise together. So we, we call it the partner school program, our business partners, because when we all work together, we can do that connection yes. and find the right fit because our resource pool is larger. And we and when we know what's in our resource pool and it's larger, everyone gets what they need. Um, and we hope that certainly businesses find that attractive and decide to come to the Blackstone Valley. Oh yeah, and, and business. One of the things they look they look at you know taxes and cost of rent and things like that. But they look mostly at is there a workforce because you can't run your plant without a workforce. No, it's hard. The robots are good, but they're not that good quite right. yet. Right. <laughs> but you need you need an educated workforce now to run the robots. Yes, yes, and I I think that the Blackstone Valley is doing pretty well, in my opinion, as far as um, mm -hmm. get, get, trying to get up to speed as fast as possible. I mean, no one can keep up with all the tech right. that's happening. I can't even do it, and uh, schools certainly have a lot of stuff going on. But I think that we're we're doing well. Well, I've always I was on a planning board for over thirty years, and I said. We are going to develop the valley as a logistic point. We're going to be supply. We're going to have the warehousing for all of New England, and that's what they're doing now. They're building huge warehouses in this Idaho for one forty six. Yes. But they don't run them like you used to, where you had somebody riding around on a cart picking picking orders. Robots do that now. Yes. So what do you need? You need someone who can repair and code and make sure those robots are running right. Absolutely. And that's what you're doing. Exactly. So it's a really, it's a great team effort all the way around. Yeah, and it's I, it's an exciting time to do it, honestly. Right. I, I mean, I've never lived, you know, in a different time than where I've done it, but I think right now because, and whether COVID moved that along faster or, or what have you, I'm not sure, but the just the explosion of technology and how it's impacted businesses and schools and everything makes it such an exciting time because there's so much opportunity, there's so much innovation. And I, you know, I was talking to my sister and it's like, I love everything we do. Mm -hmm. The only problem is, is that we don't have enough hours in the day. <laughs> yes, yes that's, I, I know you work a long day, two of you do. We do, we actually, but neither of us are full time. We actually are theoretically only 30 hours a week. Um, and I have a, another job as well. And, but I, oh, it's- How do you do it? I just like my jobs. Yeah. <laughs> I just and, and like it. And you still got to take care of home besides. Yes, and I have children and all of this. Yeah. So I, I am busy, but I'm very, very happy because it's, you know, as they said, if you love your work, it's like playing all day. And that's how I feel. Well, one thing it does, time goes, years go by fast, don't they? They do. They <laughs> do. But I'm having a good time. So. Yeah. I mean, 
we're looking forward to summer, and the first thing you know, it'll be all, it'll be over. Absolutely, because <laughs> it's time flies so fast. <laughs> but you know, you're into more than the robots. You also, because with the machine shop, you have to make the parts to make the robots. Yes. So that's going to be a big factor in the valley. Yes, absolutely. You have to know electronics because yes. these the things got to be put together. We, we actually have a ribbon cutting coming up, I believe, at the beginning of June uh, for the electronics lab, which yeah. is going to be, I think, very, very popular. Oh, I know it will. Yeah. Yes. And there's so, and it's, you know, it's set up, and I can see. And again, I'm not allowed to touch that part, but I can see it, and yeah. it's it's all hands on, and I think. You know, we all have different learning styles, but hands-on training, I just don't think you can beat it. You, no, you can't be hands-on. <laughs> you, yeah, you can't. No. It's, you got to do it, and then you know it. <laughs> when I was in the Army, we had a thing called OJT, on-the-job training. And that made the best skills, because they actually learned the job doing the job. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of our internship programs our, our, or our work based, our youth works is, is work based employment placements. Um, that's what it is. It's yeah. about, you know, matching people, making sure it's a win win placement, making sure that the businesses have support, that the individuals have support. Um, and then people learn on the job, and a lot of those can lead to full time employment. Right. And like I say, you're expanding it to, uh, it's unbelievable. Now, how did how, people can join, go there and get a training, right? Right now, there's what well, you can. There, well, there's a lot of different programs. So it it. There's, I'm talking about the, someone who's already out in the workforce. Someone who's already out in the workforce, give it six months because they're working on finishing up the licensure for public. Because right now, the programs are through, and there's I mean, there's through the schools, they're through companies. So, yep. if so if a company is sponsoring a program, someone in the public can come and enroll in that. If but the company is making those sorts of eligibility criteria for uh -huh. us. Uh, but what we're working on next is becoming a community center, essentially. That's and, a great good, yeah. yeah. And uh, Senator Fatman is helping us with that. And so that is something that I think we'll be launching in the next six months where community members will be able to sign up for classes that they're interested in or even do an exploratory day where they can try out a couple different things before they sign up for a class. Um, that we'll have workshops. We're going to start having nights at the hub, which are just like a couple hours where oh, it's an exposure wow. thing, and then maybe they want to take the next step. And so, again, back to the path pathway concept, it doesn't have to be one tunnel that it's more like a tree. Like we can start here and see if we want to go that way, and if that's working out, great. You go further, and if not, you're going to have different pathways that you're going to be able to take, and hopefully we'll be able now, to Now, a lot of this is going to hinge on getting successful. the grants, right? Yes, we're doing a pretty good job, though, with that. So yeah, you've been doing very well. <laughs> you, you had some good backing. Yes. And fortunately, we got you got some good representation with the senators and the certainly and uh, the reps. They've yes, get, they've been able to get you some good grants. Absolutely, and so we are just uh, com we have to complete the licensure process through the state for to hold public classes that are ah, not. Ah, that's the other, yeah. That's, that's the other thing. You have to be licensed from the yes. state. Yes. So that's. So we have lots of, like Grafton Job Corps has classes all the time because it's through Grafton, Grafton Job Corps or it's through a company or it's the school is, is doing that. Or if it's from a grant, actually we have, it's called Thingamajig, uh, the oh. program. And it sounds silly, but it's a great program and I love the name Thingamajig. And mm. this summer we're going to have a week for middle schoolers to come because we have a grant. Oh, and wow. any of our districts are welcome to do it. And middle schools are going to come in. They're going to learn about programming. They're going to learn about virtual reality. They're going to learn about 3D printing. And it's just an exposure to a lot of different industries in the tech, but just a little bit. And we're going to have speakers from the Chamber of Commerce because, of course, they're our partner. Right. and. I mean, you can't find a better partner than Chamber of Commerce. So we're going to have speakers in, and so now you're going to be limited in numbers. Obviously. Yes, yes. For that for that week, I believe we're taking 25 for that week. But that's an example. As we grow, you're going to see what I call pilots or templates, where so we're if, trying if, it out. If someone out there listening has a middle schooler, yes, would they get in touch with their school department? 
No, they can just talk to me. Talk to you. They, they should get a hold of you me. now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, because at 25, you're going to fill up pretty quick. I am going to fill up pretty quick. Absolutely. Um, but again, hopefully that's a template. If it's popular, then we, we are taking feedback. You know, the yeah. action speaks to us and we collect data and we look at, you know, we want to make sure we're utilizing our funds very efficiently and for the best service of our mission. Right. So if that's something that really interests the public and it goes really fast, then we know we need to do more of that because we have to increase capacity to serve more students. Um, so, yeah, so you can just go to the website, www.bvhub.org and find any one of us. And yeah. everyone knows Thingamajig, so in the, everyone knows Jocelyn, so you, you can find me. <laughs> and then just give you a call or drop an email. Absolutely. And we're all, we work as a team, so it's okay. Whoever you contact, they know how to, they know where to send you to get you to the right person. Oh, okay. Eventually, though, you have to go through your own, your own middle school. No, nope, not for that one. So, oh, like okay. I said, so it's it's a little bit complicated from yeah. the outside. Oh, okay, so you don't even yeah. talk to the school. No, you just talk to us. Right. You and register it's, and right it's going to be us. Well, the kids are on vacation, so it really doesn't affect their school. Absolutely, and we have some other programs like that. Like we worked with um, MIFA, which is the Massachusetts um, organization that helps with financial aid and educating families. So we have virtual events that anyone can come to. Yes, if Massachusetts you're, Educational Foundation, something like that. Something. MIFA. MIFA. This is like a quiz. I'm not going to. You've heard got, of it. You I've got an A plus on your quiz. I'm not going to get an A plus on this. But it's the <laughs> Massachusetts, and it's about financial aid, educational financial aid, possibly. Um, so it's like college planning, how to pay college tuition. They have a great new program called MIFA Pathways, which you can roll in when you're um, younger, and it really it, career exploration, saving for college, and all of that. Um, but that's one example. We have employability skills workshops. I just finished a five-part series, and those recordings along with slideshows and activity worksheets, everything's available to the public because yeah. that's part of our mission is we don't want to make it specific to the district or specific to the business. When we can make things publicly available for free, we are doing that on a regular basis, and that resource area will just continue to grow. But a lot of the education you're putting out there is people, they don't have to go to college. No. And I am tell you, if you saw the tuitions that they've announced this week for some of these schools, good Lord, I mean, I don't know how people are going to afford it. It's, it's very expensive at a lot of places. Certainly there's ways to strategize to make it more affordable. Um, but, I mean, you want to get spent $75,000 per year yeah. go to a school like Tufts. It's going to cost you, what, three, 250 a quarter of a million dollars in the mm -hmm. end. When you can go out and become a plumber, a, a electronics expert, a robot repair person, yeah. you don't need the college. I think for people that want to go to college, I fully support that. And I right. also oh, yeah, I am do telling too. a lot of kids, I'm like, if I was 18 right now or 20 or 25, I mean, I'm middle-aged at this point, but, um, and I don't need to career change, but I... I want to be a plumber or an electrician because the stats on that, we were talking about, you know, data narratives. Right. The stats on that are very, very clear. The The amount of the those types of tradespeople is just pummeling down, which is why no one can find an electrician to come or a right. plumber to come. And they make some serious money. Oh, so yeah. if I was doing it and I was good at all at those things, that's where I would be going because... Yeah. It's, it's a very sustainable career path. You're going to make a very livable wage, yep. probably a bit more than that, you know, and be in high demand. And there's right. not a lot of people doing it, which means less competition. That's a very secure career path that oh, I, I recommend all the time. Yeah. And, and we're always going to be needing it. There will be always be a need. Yes. That is not going to get replaced by robots for sure. <laughs> right. And you can go into your own business and do very well. Absolutely. And that's, you know, being an entrepreneur is a lot easier than it used to be. Yes. Yeah. So actually, Ashley, um, again, Ashley Bragman is the executive director. And so she, one of the ideas that's spinning around possibly for the future is having some entrepreneur 101 
courses so that people that want to get into it because of an interest or a skill yep. that we could teach them how to make a basic website some basic quickbooks you know to do their accounting how do you you know yeah. create an llc or a nonprofit and, and do yeah, some you know, education around how that. to know what you're going to do for taxes what exactly. you're going to do for yeah because that's it's kind of complicated to go into your own business and not know anything because then all of a sudden you're getting letters from the uh, tax department and say, hey, you're supposed to pay this. <laughs> yeah, but it is a lot easier than it used to be, certainly because right. of the accessibility of all the information. Right. So that's something that we are looking at as a possibility for the future is to make something like a guidebook and have, you know, a course that people, adults or whoever else, once we get our licensure, um, for that specific thing finished that, that is available to the public for those that want to learn more and right. just need some basic information to get started. This is amazing. What you're, you're doing a great job there, I'll tell you. I'm so, I, I am a big supporter of the Ed Hub. I think this because it gives people a chance to learn a skill, even if it's moderate learning, at least they got their, foot, their feet wet and they can go from there. Absolutely. And I really love that it... It serves a lot of individuals, whether it be students or young adults, um, that are you know that might well, learn differently than a traditional did, setting, and yeah. they can be wonderful and successful in the workplace. They just need a little bit of a different approach, and I know that that speaks directly to mine and Ashley and Jeannie's heart that you know we want people to be successful so if right. a little bit of a difference than a traditional setting is what they need we are so pleased that we're able to provide that one of the things you've done is you worked with the sheriff's department with the county sheriff yes and you run a program for some of the inmates yes absolutely mike hurley is the instructor for that and he goes into the the jails and runs classes for inmates and so that when they, and you've already turned a lot of lives around with that. Yes, and we have a reentry program, and yeah. so that those individuals um, that are interested in coming out with some skills and some prospects, um, right. you know, that they, it gives them better choices. You know, right. that well, to, when they come out to live a life that that gives meaning and that they can be proud of. Yeah, you know, they were probably the ones that were in school and they dropped out because it was so boring. And then <laughs> what are you doing? They don't find a decent job, they turn to crime. Well, now they can find a decent job because they got a great skill. Yes, and a lot of employers, and, and I really like this trend, are really turning away from, I mean, I, I went to college, I have my master's, so it's not that I, I am against degrees, for, and I think they're very meaningful as well. Oh, yeah, I think, it's a strong need, yeah, but not for everyone. Not for everyone, and I think that there's a place for that, but there's also a place to value experience and skills. So you see a lot of employers looking at skill hiring, meaning that that can uh -huh. come from degrees, but they're also open to skills coming from more um, alternative methodology as well. Yes. Um, and that really opens the gates for individuals that maybe didn't have a traditional path um, like I did that maybe they were incarcerated and they got certification and they have hands-on skills and we have an employer who is open to something like that their retention is going to be very high with that employee yes. because um, they're going to be valued it's going to feel good to the employer it's going to feel good to the employee and the retention rate is going to be very high which is a win for the employer as well because turnover is expensive right I know Jean told me she was amazed at how smart some of them guys are. Well, you know, she says that, but I, I am not surprised. I mean, like, there's smart people can, really smart people can go any which way, you right. know? like right. <laughs> well, you know, I don't think being in jail means that you're not smart. I don't think that if you aren't succeeding in a traditional school system, it means you're not smart. That is just my belief, but that also, you can succeed in traditional school systems and be smart. I think there's a lot of different types of intelligence and part of this... It's how you challenge that intelligence. Yes, and, and how you use it. Right. Yeah. And you're a teacher, right? Well, I'm not... I mean, I, I, I'm now, a but, licensed teacher technically yeah, still, but I yeah, haven't yeah, been right, for right, some right. Yeah. So <laughs> you, you know something about education. And yes. Know, everybody learns in different ways. Yes, absolutely. And as a teacher, if you've got uh, 25, 30 kids in a class... You can't teach to the individual. 
No, you can differentiate, but it's certainly difficult, especially as class size is rising. Yeah, and there's, there's no way you can teach to the individual because you get too many of them. Yes, yes, and, it, and you do, you, all you can do is do your best you can and hope for the best. And hope for the best, which is why I think that there's a push for for a little bit of a shift in our public school model to bring some of these yes. pathways, to bring this hands-on, to bring experiences yes. that the kids can be outside of the school system, they can be inside. And I think that a lot of the schools are receptive to that. And I think that it's serving more students in, in a more meaningful way because of it. You know, uh, one of the problems, and the biggest reason public schools don't do as well as private schools, they have something that the private schools don't have. They have a discipline problem. The public schools? Yes. Private schools don't have a discipline problem because if you have a discipline problem, they throw you out. That's I mean, that's true. That's but the public <laughs> schools, they have to accept everyone. Yes. So if you've got a discipline problem, the teacher has to deal with it. Well, the, yes, the teacher or the team, depending and it on how it's hard to upset. teach the class, and it's harder on all the students. Yeah. But maybe that discipline problem, too, is because he, that, person, that student is not happy in that class. Yeah, and, and it, because they're not learning this way that they could in a different class. It could be, it could be boredom. It could be frustration. It could be emotional dysregulation. Right. It could be all sorts of. It could be diagnoses, all sorts of things. That it is hard to manage a large size classroom for different, especially with standards and especially with all of those things. I think the schools are getting better with it. Certainly, right. um, in a lot of. Uh, highly intelligent people, I mean, and you can look for case studies of this, it's proven time and time again, really highly intelligent people tend to have a hard time in those types of settings. Yes. Um, and for various reasons, and that doesn't mean that if you're successful, you're not highly uh, intelligent. It just means there's different people. Just because you have a hard time in school doesn't mean you're not smart. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, but like I said, you know, if in your case, in your, in your ed hub, they want to be there. Yes. So there's not a discipline problem because they want to be there. No, there's, I don't, I can't think of a discipline problem that I've experienced ever at the hub. No, because um, they want to be there. Yeah, it, well, it's a lot of fun. It's like the right. staff is having fun as much as the kids or the adults because there's, and I think choice has a lot to do with it. Yes. Um, and we, there's so many choices and we are not as restricted as public schools. So it's right. not that, you know, we're not in the same circumstances. Public schools have less choices than we do. So we can customize things. We can say, this isn't working. We're going to do it this way. Um, you know, this, this approach is not working. So we're going to change that approach or this is really popular. We're having a lot of engagement. We're going to duplicate that. Um, and so we're able to approach education similar to a business in that we can change based on the data in the moment where public schools um, tend to and I and I want to just be very clear I think they're doing a wonderful job they have a lot more barriers oh, for you know I, because I've always said that it's they can't just change be, and respond to the moment they're not a they're not a business in that way right and, and you know I think you know, you're gonna have a hundred percent parents if the parents don't back the teachers makes it a lot harder too. It, I mean, it's the simple concept of teamwork, I think. Yep. Um, and I think currently we, we see a lot of division in, yes. in our culture. Yes. And that's certainly not helping anyone, regardless of, of whatever size, how many size, what side. I'm so tired of sides. Um, I think everyone working together, and re regardless of the setting, and being respectful and kind and open to each other, is what makes it work, whether that's in a business setting, a school setting, or just in a community. And now the big problem that schools are having now is what of uh, immigrants? Well, I mean, problem is a strong word. I think it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. Yeah, but you've got to deal with a lot yeah. of different languages now. That That is certainly a challenge. And, and I, English not being the, the first yeah. language. And the the... A this this fall especially because right as school started was when the buses happened in Boston and everyone you know certainly yep. some of my districts we held in fall um, a virtual event on 
immigration and inclusion in schools with some of the schools that had more experience with this. For our districts, a lot of our smaller districts had no experience because right. it's a more homogeneous po uh, population. And so we try to connect those resources so they know where to get help, who's going to respond, who's not going to respond. So we try to support our schools in that way. Um, and I think the schools have had varying success and reactions to to the new families and you know this is that's something that that I don't get into a lot of because I want to respect every community and town and their schools decisions right. and, and my job is to support them and how they want to do it and offer resources and solutions if they're looking for it but certainly especially for our smaller districts that were not prepared or hadn't dealt with it before it was it was an immense uh, challenge because it was almost overnight and yes and one of the the bigger challenges is they're they're mandated they have to provide a meaningful education for every student so then you have to have bilingual you have to have google translator and do all of this but I then know. <laughs> it makes it really hard when uh, populations are moved because then you can't hire someone full time that's going to crush your budget because they might get moved and you know that that group might be moved by the state in 2 months so that i think the the mobilization is is as far as feedback what i've heard is the biggest challenge because they can't plan yes. and they can't hire appropriately yeah and that that goes with special education i mean the money follows the student but the student sometimes moves Yes. And you don't get the funding until the following year. Funding is a, is a big, has always been, but I would say right now, um, our schools, specifically our, our public schools, um, our traditional public schools, the funding is very lean. And I think with the general economy, as we know, we're having a lot of inflation and all of this stuff. Yes. So certainly the towns don't have extra money to put into it, but the mandates for schools continue oh, to increase. The mandates increase and the budget goes down. Yeah. Um, and so it's, our schools are being amazingly creative. They're being amazingly resourceful in how they're trying to approach this. And they often get criticized, I think unfairly, because people don't understand what is being asked of them and how much is being asked of them for what budget um and you know certainly i hope that that something comes in to to give them some relief well soon. i think we need more cooperation like you do with the ed yeah. i said for years we need to set up a regional concept and you'd have like we got three towns here got oxbridge Northbridge, and we'll say grafton well one could specialize in computer education one could specialize in another type of education, even liberal arts. Mm -hmm. And then the kids, you know, no matter what town you're in, you go to that school for that particular, like, like, like a college, can, a university does. Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting concept. I, um, I know that a number of our districts are very interested in the concept. Again, this is something we're just exploring, and if there's enough interest, we'll pursue. Um, but we've we've started talking about maybe having mini hubs at the schools themselves. Yes. Yeah, that um, would be a, that would be outstanding. And so equipment could be live there during the day, yep. so that school district could utilize that. But then you know, in the afternoons, evenings, weekends, what what have you, they would be open to having multi district classes come. Yes. Um, so it can hit the transcripts, but they also are getting that hands on training, but it's not just in White and Spell that because eventually we're gonna run out of space very actually very soon. Yeah, so, yeah you right? pretty much filled up the bottom <laughs> we, of the filled mill up. now. So that is something that we're exploring and that's a way that we can start um, you know, we're all about resource sharing with businesses with our schools as i've said it's all about really starting to look at our resources pull them in a way that we can get access to everyone so that's something that that we're looking at right now as a possibility yeah and especially uh, teaching aids are very expensive today yes yes they are a lot of it's hands-on <laughs> everything's expensive these days right but a lot of the stuff a lot of equipment yeah. today is hands-on it's not the old days where you wrote on the blackboard i mean now you get the those the smart what? boards or the one boards. Yeah, the yeah. computer type boards. You need large TVs in the rooms. Yes. You need a lot of things. You do. You absolutely do. And the, actually, I use. We have a, a few of them, and that's what I use for teacher training. So that way, they can do it right on. And um, 
Everything is expensive. Yeah, yeah. and you need I the mean, equipment. You, it's not just for fun. You got to supply your kids with computers. Yes, and they have to be. You know, we have Chromebooks right now, and I sometimes, you know, I hate Chromebooks. I'll tell you, because <laughs> <laughs> as I always tell, tell, I tell the business. I think I told Jeannie today. I said you lose more money and productivity with a slow computer than anything else. If you yep. hand your staff a slow computer, they're going to be frustrated. The work's going to take longer. I don't understand why saving a couple hundred dollars. She did not argue, by the way. I was just pontificating, but like. Um, no, but you're but right. Our, you, you do what? What's the yeah. average class? Forty-five minutes. Yes. That's what it was when I was yeah. in school, so that didn't change. Yeah. But in that forty-five minutes, you only got forty-five minutes to get these things done. If yeah. the computer's slow, it's taking up a good portion of that forty-five minutes. Yeah, but computers are, exp you know, in pro good processing computers are expensive. Uh, right. You know, schools don't have money for that sort of thing. Right. Um, and it. Well, it's, like we had the situation with the uh, with during COVID. They wanted the kids to learn at home, but not every kid can buy a computer either. Right, and they they did give out Chromebooks, and the state did fund Chrome uh, Chromebooks are similar. I'm not sure if everyone got Chromebooks, but that was like the most popular one at the time. Right. And I had a kindergartner and a second grader at the time doing Zoom school, as we as we called it, yes. while I was working in another room Zooming and <laughs> the year of Zoom. But it, you know those. I replaced those myself, luckily, because I was able to replace those myself. Yes, but not every family could. No, because my six- and eight-year-old, the amount of frustration dealing with something that's not loading, that's not working properly, one, it it disengages them from an interest in going into something like this because they think it's frustrating when it's not. Yeah. Um, and also just it's so slow, everything takes longer. Oh. I put them on iPads, yeah. <laughs> and it worked way better. <laughs> Nothing, no one had a short of atten attention span in kids. Well, some I don't know. Some adults, well, some adults have, have very <laughs> short attention, attention spans, too. But when yeah. you're sitting there, I get frustrated with my computer because sometimes it's so. Yeah, yeah. So actually, the chamber we just, uh, Liz and Kristen are, as you, you've met them a million times, yes. they talk to me and say, we need better laptops. We're going to throw these through the window. So. Uh -huh. That is something that is on my list to research. Well, the other thing that happened, too, with technology, <laughs> it changes every every quarter. Yes, <laughs> you it can't, really does. How do you keep up with it? We have the same situation here. We have to renew our stuff. We have to renew almost all our equipment every 10 years. Yeah, yeah. It's exp it's expensive. And, the, yeah. and, and back to the education point, it's, it's, it's not that I, you know, the, the schools, again, they're doing the best they can. Um, but we need to put this technology in the students' hands, in the young adults' hands, in the reentry folks' hands, because that is what is going to meet the needs of the employers, which attracts employers, it retains employers in our area, which helps our tax base, which then Absolutely. helps our economy. And so all of these things are connected, and I, I want more and more people to realize how vital and connected they all are. Yeah. Better to have a job locally, especially today. Yes. Keep the costs on commuting down. <laughs> well, gas is expensive. <laughs> right. Oh, we're running out of time here. Okay. Thank you for coming in, Jocelyn. Thanks for having me. It's always fun and, to uh, come and see you. If anybody wants to get a hold of you, do you have a web address? or? Yes, I do. www.bvhub, that's Blackstone Valley, so bvhubhub.org. Hey, located right here in the Linwood Mill. In yes. the basement. They can, if you want to visit, they can stop in and visit. Absolutely. My office is near the waterfall. <laughs> oh, you got a great spot. I do have a great spot. Jeannie hooked me yeah. up on that one. <laughs> that waterfall is really nice. Yes. We, have, we had a lot of rain, so it's really flowing nice. It, it's great right now, and I have two swans that come and visit on a regular basis, so and I couldn't they, be happier. They're nesting now. Have you seen them? I have seen them. I, I say it. I feel like I my office is like a fairy book sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. They, yeah. And... and one of them sits on that nest all day long. They alternate, but there's always one keeping those eggs warm. I love it. so. I really do love it so much. Yeah, yeah we have a patio, so I get to go look at oh. it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much for coming in. And uh, next week, I, oh, I can't think off the top of my head who I got for a guest now. I knew, but I forgot. <laughs> we'll have to week. tune in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a